Hey guys, this is Alex from TechFusion and thank you so much for joining me today on this video where I want to show you exactly what hardware do you need and uh, how can you get it on the cheap in order to start farming Chia. So guys, if you're just as excited as me to start farming Chia today in hopes that from tomorrow onwards, uh, that being the 1st of June 2021, the pools are open and then everybody can join in the madness, you might want to go over some basic hardware that you need in order to farm Chia efficiently while also sticking to a budget. So guys, a quick overview for today's example and for today's uh, setup that I have right here. I have two enterprise drives, these are SAS drives, 15,000 RPMs each, rated at 300 gigabytes each. I have a cable to connect both of these drives to a uh, controller, this is a RAID controller that goes into your PC. And all of them together, they cost just uh, around $120 and this will get you in the ballpark of around 170, 180, 190 depends um, sustained write speeds for the Chia blockchain while doing your plotting. So this price compared to an NVMe drive is actually nothing. Uh, maybe the performance is definitely not so good, not especially with an NVMe drive that is running the PCI Express 4 protocol, but this in comparison to that is very cheap. Of course, you can expand your capacity and you can do multiple plottings at the same time using some of these drives. And these don't break or wear out as fast as the NVMe drives. Actually, theoretically anyway, these drives should be working just fine indefinitely because this is how they've been designed to work in servers 24 seven without them breaking. On the other hand, the NVMe drives or regular SSD drives, they do break at some point because you can't just keep writing data to them indefinitely uh, as they have an endurance limit. So these drives here definitely don't connect to any normal PC with the SATA interface. That's why they are called SAS because this is uh, the SCSI interface. And for this SCSI interface here, uh, we actually need an adapter cable like the ones here via the controller that connects to the computer, that's how you will set it up and uh, how you will connect everything together. So um, this controller here, uh, the controller model, I will leave a link down in the description, is the HP H240 RAID controller, it's a 12 gigabits per uh, second uh, controller, but um, it takes in the mini uh, SFF uh, 8087 connector, which is this guy here, just goes into it like this, and on the other side, it takes, uh, it's a dual output of the SFF8482 connector that goes into the uh, drives. Um, alongside with this, of course, you have your SATA power because you need to power the drives. And this just plugs into your computer using the PCI Express lane. It actually uses only eight lanes out of the total 16, but anyway, it's doing just, uh, it's doing a great job like that. So what we are working with here, it's the drive bay that I have in my uh, PC. Uh, this actually came with the unit itself. It's from the H500M from Cooler Master. And I haven't been sponsored in any way to tell you anything about them, but I have actually found it uh, quite nice that they actually provide you with the, these, uh, if I could actually show you, with these drive cages right here. So these drive cages are actually fairly nice, there's only two of them, but they're actually very good for uh, three and a half inch drives, like the ones that I'm working with today. So uh, well, when you have one of these uh, small plastic caddies, what do you do, you just bend them up like this, be sure to actually make the front of the, well, actually be sure to actually make the back of the hard disk uh, accessible towards the back of the PC case where you have all the cabling coming from the PSU and all the connections. So be careful when you line them up so that you have the front facing the front of the caddy. There's uh, four pins, two on each side of the caddy right here. So I don't know if you can see this, one, two, three and uh, four right down here. And there's actually, well, six in this case holes on the drive itself. There's three on each side but uh so there's actually six holes on the drive there's three on each side but we're only we're only going to be using two on each side for this uh well for this mount here anyway just going through this quickly uh, we bend this outwards make sure to align the pins with the holes on the drive on both sides 
And once we have done that, they actually push in into the little holes and now it's secured in its little uh, caddy. You can close the door and this is one drive ready to go and I will install it in the PC case now. So we've taken care of drive number one, then I'm gonna do, now I'm gonna do the same thing for drive number two. I'm gonna sit it in the caddy and meet you guys around the back where I'm gonna show you the connections and how you can uh, route the cable to the controller that it's sitting now in the PCI Express slot in the motherboard. So this is how it looks with the drives inside the bay and I'll see you in the back. So guys, if you do excuse the rat's nest that it's uh, lying around here, I'm just gonna take the dual SFF8482 connector and these are these guys right here and these will go directly into the drive like so so one goes in like so there we go made a click and i'll take the other one uh, taking care of the notch because they are keyed in such a way that you can't put them in backwards there we go and what we have hanging out now is the sata power that I'm just gonna connect with the regular SATA power that is coming from my power supply. Of course, this is keyed as well, and this is keyed as well, so they can't go in uh, the wrong way. So I'm gonna take care of the business right now. Of course, the cable never wants to go in the normal least resistant way, so to say. There we go. And this is the cable, the part of the cable that has to go into the controller itself that is resting in the PCI Express slot. This is the SFF8087 and we are going to route this and see you guys on the other side where I'm going to plug it into the controller itself. So anyway guys, this is uh, just after we've uh, completed the cable management portion. So just to show you guys that I'm not actually a cable hoarder and everything is just tucked away nice and easy. Just behind these covers here so you don't get to see anything. So now I am actually going to show you how you can hook up. Uh, this is the other end. So this is the um, mini SFF8482 that goes into the uh, board itself. There we go. Nice satisfying click. And you're just about done. So now we get to turn on the computer and it's gonna take two more minutes actually than it normally does because it's going through a boot cycle where first of all it's uh, talking to the controller and the controller has to talk back to the system and after this step is done then uh, and only then the BIOS from the motherboard can resume its duties and then you can boot up into Windows. So uh, let's get to see how it is. So guys basically this is the system, it's all set up. I have have the two drives already um, made into a RAID 0 configuration. Uh, I've just named it RAID 15K, 600 gigs. Uh, it's almost 600 gigs as you can see here. It's uh, fully empty and it's running as uh, one unit. Uh, there is actually one program that you can use. It's HP Smart Storage Administrator that you can use and uh, you can change a lot of settings in here. I'll make another video separate from this one. If uh, anybody's interested, you can leave down a comment and I'll get right back with another video about it. So anyway, the reason why you're all here, let's just start a plot, let's add a plot, uh, let's stick to the standard size. I just want to see how uh, these uh, puppies go, so uh, I'll just add this plot to queue. Temporary, I'll just, uh, well, put it on the raid, because that's its purpose. And I'll just go for the final directory for the moment, just choose something. So let's go to create a plot. So it's started the plotting phase, so now I'll just open up Task Manager and I'll show you the performance on these two. Uh, okay, there we are. We have about, well, between 160 and 200. I think it's, uh, it's you know, varying a lot. I think it's uh, doing this because of the various uh, stages of the plotting. Um, the CPU usage is not that great, neither is the memory. This is a... Um, Ryzen 9 3900X, it's a 12 core, 34 threads, and it's uh, OC'd at 4.2 gigahertz, and I'm running at uh, 32 uh, gigs of memory, running at 3600 megahertz. So the system, it's not under any strains at all. 
uh, I won't be leaving the entire plot as this takes I've I heard and I've seen around uh, 10 11 12 hours ish on this configuration right here now surely with an NVMe drive uh, especially the ones that go on gen 4 uh, this time can drop to eight hours some people say even six point six and a half or seven hours depending on uh, on the configurations but anyway I will uh, leave a comparison so this is the raid zero running the two drives the 15,000 rpm drives together with the SAS controller and this is the speed it gives us and right now I'll pause this plot and I will show you using my Samsung uh, NVMe SSD the 980 Pro 2 terabytes one it's not running raid and I'll just uh, start a plot with this guy as well to see the right speed that it is capable of so here we are again into Chia let's open up a new plot let's stick again to the standard size I'll just use one temporary location so I'm just gonna use for this demonstration my Samsung uh, one terabyte uh, actually is the Samsung two terabytes has been broken up into two partitions so I'm just gonna go with this Chia plots select the folder as a temporary drive and as well I'll select it as a final drive and the final drive is uh, well right here it's this one okay so let's create a plot let's start plotting away and let's go into the performance over here and see how fast does the NVMe SSD write so it's going to get uh, wow okay it's varying between 200, 280, 300, and uh, wow, 480, 440, 370, six something. So as you can see, this is the difference that you can expect between an NVMe running the um, Gen 4. Uh, I think you can get even better performance out of this if you're not using it as a temporary drive as well as a final drive. 65 megs second okay so that's not that good but anyway uh, running a uh, raid zero on uh, those two puppies for something that costs around a hundred bucks I don't think is that bad and especially that uh, considering that you don't have to throw it away every I don't know half a year depending on how much you write to it so I think it's uh, fairly good to say that uh, if you're running raid zero on um, more than uh, just a few of these drives you can plot simultaneously a lot of um, Chia um, plots and I think it's uh, doing it quite well on the budget. Right guys, well thank you so much for joining me today on this video. I hope you get a great idea now about what performance you can expect out of these uh, two SAS drives that I've put together here for less than 100 bucks or just around 100 bucks anyway in comparison to the uh, latest generation NVMe running the um, Gen 4 Samsung SSDs. Alright guys, leave your thoughts down in the comments down below, I'll get back to you guys and as well I'll keep you updated with uh, what's going on and with more videos down the line. Thank you.